When I was a kid, I once told my mother that if heaven was how it is popularly uh, portrayed, you know, a place of eternal chilling and reclining, an eternal church service, then I might rather go to hell because at least sounded more interesting. It was not a good thing to say to your mother. <laughs> However, when we think of things like eternal life, what we imagine is often the antithesis of what makes life now precious and sweet. We imagine that eternal life is simply life extended on a line that never ends. What is eternal life? It is static. It is unchanging, unmoving, life multiplied by infinity. We think of eternal life in spatial terms, a line that will never end, or in terms of time, time that will never end. And that's fine and interesting enough, uh, but is that really something to hope for? The modernist American poet Wallace Stevens uh, who was a banker, by the way, that was his day job. So for all you bankers out there, there's hope for you still to have a deep life in the arts. Uh, Wallace Stevens, he was not quite an atheist, but almost one, wrote uh, a poem called Sunday Morning. And it is not a devotional poem, I just want to be clear. Written in 1915, and it wrestles and argues against this sense of eternity, against the way religion often portrays the meaning of eternal life as static, unchanging life. Stevens writes, Is there no change of death in paradise? Does ripe fruit never fall? Or do the boughs hang always heavy in that perfect sky, unchanging yet so like our perishing earth, with rivers like our own that seek for seas they never find, the same receding shores that never touch with our inarticulate pang? Is there no change in paradise? Does ripe fruit never fall? Here we see that eternity is static, unchanging. The fruit can never fall because if it falls, it perishes. It always hangs perpetually there like a still work of art. It is always there for you to see, but there is no movement. There is no life. Stevens argues in the poem that without death, without decay, can there be beauty? Is joy possible in a world of static perfection? If there is nothing changing, if nothing is precious and dear, does it lose its meaning? If eternal life is simply imagined as life times infinity, then how is the promise of eternal life good news? When Jesus speaks of eternal life, he does not talk about a changeless paradise of time and space stretched on and on and on. He is very clear what he means about eternal life. He says this, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. What is eternal life? It is knowing the eternal God. These words of Jesus are part of a prayer that he begins in chapter 17, and he has been talking quite a bit with the disciples. The setting is the Last Supper. Uh, beginning in chapter 13 all the way up to this point, Jesus has been preparing them for what is about to happen. He's told them that he's about to die. He's about to go away and that this uh, is going to be frightening for them. And in fact, that they will experience some of the same persecution and suffering that he has experienced and will experience. And amidst this rather bleak uh, future prediction of what will happen, Jesus is giving them words of hope, uh, courage, and comfort. He tells them again and again to love one another as he has loved them. He tells them that, yes, he is going away, but it is not a sad and awful thing. He is going away so that he might send the Holy Spirit, the helper, to show them the truth, to give them courage, to give them strength. The Spirit, 
will help the disciples discover Jesus and to encounter Jesus. They will, the Spirit will help them to remember him. As wondrous as it was to have God walking with you right in front of you in the person of Jesus, Jesus tells them it will be even more wondrous because God's very Spirit, God's life itself will dwell inside of you, closer to you than your own breath. In chapter 17, he switches, not giving the disciples advice, but talking directly to the Father, praying to God. What he has already told the disciples, that their hope is in sharing in his life, that the Spirit will make this happen, he continues in his prayer. Again and again, Jesus talks about the invitation that they have through the Spirit, through each other, to share in his life, which is to share in the life of God. And this sharing in the life of Jesus and the life of the Father, this is what eternal life is. What is eternal life? It is knowing Jesus and knowing the Father. This is not simply intellectual knowledge, nice content that you store away. This is the type of knowledge that you know, as the expression says, in your bones, in the deepest parts of who you are. It is the type of knowledge that looks closer to confidence and trust than content uh, and intellectual ideas. What is eternal life? It is knowing the Father and knowing Jesus. It is not a sweet planet that we get to rule for eternity. This is a common religious, popular religious tradition. This is what eternal life is portrayed at. You get your own planet. Uh, women, you get to be pregnant for all of eternity. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> clearly, it was a religion devised by man. Eternal life is not a bunch of golden swag that you are given. It is not eternal vacation, which would start to be quite dull at a certain point, wouldn't it? It is not the ability to eat as much ice cream as you want with no fear of calories. That one is pretty appealing to me, though. I will not lie. Jesus is clear. Eternal life is knowing him. This is less a picture of the quantity of life that we will have in the age to come and more a picture of the quality of the life that we have, will have, and already can have now. Knowing God is not static and dull and boring. Knowing God is an endless adventure. Knowing God is being brought into the one who has no end and no beginning. It is learning again and again God's love for us and for all things. It is discovering more and more how much we are loved by God, how loving God is. It is discovering who God is. You could think of eternal life as falling in love with God again and again for all eternity. In the same way that we can never fully grasp another person, there always seem to be more to them. I have been married not very long, 13 years, and sometimes still my wife is a mystery to me, as I know that I am to her, as I am to myself, in fact. Sometimes I do things and I'm like, wow, or I say things like, where did that come from? That's kind of amazing that I, that came from my mouth. There's always more to discover about each of us. Even more so is there more to discover about our eternal God who loves us. Eternal life is about being eternally drawn into God's life, into God's heart. It is a picture of endless movement inward, into the heart of reality. When Dante portrays it in Paradiso in his final work, uh, the... Uh, of his uh, three-part series, it's an uh, image of dancing, movement, concentric circles moving inward closer and closer to God. If eternal life is knowing God more and more, then it is not simply something that we look forward to in the sweet by and by. It is something that we can experience even now. 
The life of the Christian is an endless journey, a pilgrimage being drawn deeper into the knowledge and love of the Father and the Son. The work of the Holy Spirit in our lives is the work of God drawing us deeper and deeper into his life. Even now we can experience eternal life because even now we can begin to know our eternal God. You can know the God who made you and loves you. How do you think your experience of life now, in this world, in a world where there are endless expectations that you are never quite meeting, in a world filled with decay and suffering, in a world that uh, does not want to give you forgiveness and mercy, but gives only more demands, how would your experience of this life be if you knew the God who made you also is the God who loves you? We begin every service with the words from the Colic for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. And if we didn't know our God, that could be a frightening concept, that God knows every single thing about me, every thought I've had, every desire I've had. But the promise of the gospel is that God knows every single thing about me, and yet he loves me eternally. Eternal life is being drawn into that love that God has for us, being drawn closer to the maker of heaven and earth. This is eternal life, that they would know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. The gift of Jesus is for eternal life for all who believe. It is a gift that you can begin to experience now in this life with the hope that in the life to come you will experience it more fully. It is a gift of being loved, being known, and knowing the one who loves and knows you. I do not know for certain what the life to come will be like, but I do know that it will not be static, will not be dull, for we shall know him who is beyond all knowing, and we shall love him who loves us perfectly, and we shall understand more and more the height and depth and strength of his love and be eternally surprised by this love for us. Lord, may we begin to know you even now. Give us this eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.